Good afternoon, everybody. Buenas tardes. I am Ricardo Perez, professor of anthropology and chair of the sociology, anthropology, criminology, and social work department. It is my pleasure to welcome students, faculty, staff, and members of the Willimante community to the University Hour presentation of the week, Hecho en Puerto Rico, Made in Puerto Rico, a master class with Angel Vasquez. Angel will perform his monologue, Hecho en Puerto Rico, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. in the Fine Arts Instructional Center Proscenium Theater. During the following an hour, Angel Vasquez will share with us his experiences envisioning and creating Hecho en Puerto Rico and will explain its successful run at different universities in Puerto Rico and the United States. Today, he will talk about the research and creative process behind the performance, the audiences that he seeks to engage with, and the challenges of producing the play with a limited budget. He will also discuss important historical moments and historical figures that have shaped Puerto Rican culture and idiosyncrasy. His presentation will shed light on current political, economic, and sociocultural issues on the island, such as the crippling financial debt of the Puerto Rican government and the devastation caused by the recent hurricanes and earthquakes in South Puerto Rico. Taken together, these economic and environmental catastrophes have exacerbated the colonial relationships between Puerto Rico and the United States and contributed to an increase in the rates of out-migration to the United States mainland. Angel Vasquez is a distinguished actor, playwright, and director from Puerto Rico. He holds a Bachelor of Arts in Drama and Design from Florida State University and a Master's in Arts Administration from Turabo University in Puerto Rico. Currently, he is a resident artist at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College a higher education institution within the City University of New York system. He is only the third Puerto Rican-born actor to have performed at the Lincoln Center for the Arts in New York City, the other ones being Miguel Piñero and, and Raul Juliá. Angel premiere Hecho en Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico and has toured to Chicago, Orlando, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and New York. He has performed the monologue more than 147 times, and more than 35,000 people have seen it. Puerto Rican journalist Sandra Rodriguez has described Hecho en Puerto Rico as one of the most important plays of contemporary theater. Today's University Hour presentation has been made possible thanks to the support of the University Hour Program Committee. I want to express my gratitude to the Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. William Salka, and his Administrative Assistant, Amanda Irwin. I also want to acknowledge the support of Lisa Hotelin and the staff at Media Services for video recording this presentation, and Laura Martinson, Student-Centered Assistant, for helping us to set up this room. Additionally, I want to, uh, to take advantage of this opportunity to acknowledge the general support of the theater and performance media program, the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, Criminology, and Social Work, the Latin American and Caribbean Studies Program, the World Languages and Cultures Department, and the Office of the Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, which have made possible the performance of Hecho en Puerto Rico tomorrow evening. Because this presentation will be recorded, we ask the audience members wishing to ask a question or make a comment to use the microphone on the right-hand corner of the theater. Finally, we also ask that you sign in the attendance sheet at the table by the entrance to the theater if you didn't do so already. Without further ado, join me in welcoming Angel Vasquez to Eastern Connecticut State University. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Well, thank you for having me here. My last name is Vasquez. My first name is Angel. Please do not let the name fool you. Uh, we're going to have a master class today about Scientology. No? Oh, I'm sorry. What is this about? Theater. 
It's, it's about a play. It's about the play. Well, um, I'm going to put some music in the background just for so we can uh, get into the mood. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some acting, acting as, as a business. Are there any um, theater students here? Good, good, good. We're going to talk about that. I think it's important. When I went, when I went to school, my first day of school, uh, I, uh, the professor said that only 95% of the actors actually work professionally. So I said, wow, uh, how can that be? And I think it's true. And uh, I proposed that I, I can convey my experiences to, so that you are uh, active actors in the future. Because uh, it is a business. It is a business, uh, the business of acting. So we need to know some things that I'm going to share with you uh, shortly. Let's start. Let's go to the next. Uh, there. Um, in order to uh, be active as an actor, you need to diversify yourself. You know, learn your craft. Learn everything there is to know about acting. Learn everything as an actor, all the styles, all the accents, and find out if you maybe have uh, all the tools that maybe you don't know yet. Like, I didn't know I could sing until I got to school. And I, we all had to sing a song, and they said, well, you can sing. You're, really? Okay. And then, uh, <clears throat> so I started to, to take singing classes also, and dancing classes. So it broadens uh, the field, so you can do musicals, you can do a lot of things. Um, but then, what really um, gave me the opportunity to be active was when I learned how to write. I became a playwright. And uh, it, it all began when I was in school. I was away from Puerto Rico. And uh, at that time, we didn't have internet. So we have to communicate through letters. So I wrote a lot of letters uh, every week, almost every day. And I found out that people, my family and friends, enjoy my letters, and they were laughing also. So I said, there's something there. I, and I began to, to write. But then, what do you write about when you're going to um, write a play? Well, you have to have some passion, of course, uh, to know uh, also your audience. Who are you going to write to? Who are you going to present to? And see if you can uh, meet the standards so that you can uh, uh, engage your audience with your play. And uh, in order to do that, you need to do some research, of course. And uh, that's very, very important to do research before you start uh, actually writing a play. And uh, like for my next play, I was um, doing my research at the Puerto Rican Center uh, for uh, Studies in, in uh, Hunter College. And I found out a lot of things that I didn't know. And uh, that's the way you can surprise yourself and surprise your audience uh, with uh, the knowledge that um, probably nobody knew until they see your, your work. And uh, in terms of production, I mean, some people want to be in Hollywood. Some people want to be in Broadway. I have been to uh, Hollywood. I've worked with Sylvester Stallone, Antonio Banderas, Selena Gomez, Ricky Martin. I've done soap, uh, General Hospital, television, radio. And it's always been a, a great learning experience. However, I found myself in this place where I said, um, I want to say something important. I want to do my own work so that I don't do somebody else's work, which maybe I don't really uh, believe in or I'm not interested in. So that's what I took things in my own hands and began to write. 
and I began to write uh, political satire. And uh, we had a, a group called Los Juanes del Pueblo, and uh, it went on for about 10 years. We had five musicians. We had a lot of fun. And right after that, um, we, uh, um, I began to write monologues. Why? Because to produce a play, it's very, very expensive, as you may know. And uh, so I said, how can I uh, go about this? And I just went into um, a minimalized the, the production, the, the play. So um, what's the best way is it's to be a one-man show you know, on stage. And uh, see the, this suitcase over there? That's the play. The whole play, tomorrow's play, it's in there right now. I, I travel uh, from New York yesterday, and that's the play right there. That's all I need. And there's also music and, and uh, other things, but basically that's uh, the play. So when, when you're talking about budget, uh, these productions uh, are very, very expensive. But if you want to do, your, uh, you, have, you want to have the freedom to do uh, the things that you really want to do, talk about the things that you want to talk about, you know, you want to make a difference. Because I see theater as a tool for change, uh, to better our society, to talk about uh, important things, uh, like I always do in my plays. I talk about racism, for instance. Uh, in, in my plays, and uh, I think that I have touched some hearts uh, from my career with with my plays. So, uh, in other words, in other words, it's it's uh, don't stop, uh, be persistent, go and and just do what you want to do in order to stay uh, active as an actor. About the monologue, the monologue, this is a, a short video, promotional video of a play. Why did I write this play? I, I used to be the uh, cultural director of a university in Puerto Rico, and I uh, talk about uh, many things uh, with the students. And uh, I would ask them questions about ourselves, about our history, about um, actors, about politicians, and they could not answer a single question. I mean, they were blank. I mean, like, I, they didn't know what I was talking about. And then I said, I have to write something so that I can uh, educate uh, my people. Uh, and that's, that's how it all started. And, uh, but, the thing is, we don't teach in Puerto Rico um, history or, or the real history of Puerto Rico. Uh, but it also happens here in the States. The black and white picture that you see there, that's uh, Helen Keller. And everybody knows who she is, right? Can anybody tell me who she is? She was deaf and blind. Yeah, deaf and blind. And what did she do? What is she famous for? She wrote a book. She went to school. She overcame all of that. She went to uh, university. Okay, basically that's all the information we know about Helen Keller. But the real story is that once she, she got her education, uh, Helen 
became an activist for human rights, uh, for human rights, for uh, uh, women's liberation, and he went. She went into uh, marches. He wrote uh, important letters to then President Woodrow Wilson. She was very, very active. But historians don't tell you that story. That's what happens with history in Puerto Rico. They don't tell us what really happened before. So if you don't know your own history, you don't know yourself. And you don't know where you're going. And you don't have any self-confidence, right? So that's why I decided to write uh, this play. And in order to uh, explain the process, I have to go through the Puerto Rican history. You know, it was a Spanish colony discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1492. And, uh, and then uh, the first governor was uh, Ponce de Leon. So he was the first governor of Puerto Rico. That's Puerto Rico. I have the map here because I want to show you how small uh, the territory of Puerto Rico is. It's not, it's not this big, it's only this big. I mean, if you sneeze on top of it, it disappears. You can't see it. A hundred miles long per 35 miles wide. Very small, very small. Okay, that's important. A hundred miles per 35. Okay, so during the, the Spanish uh, colony regime, uh, we accomplished some things. We had railroads, we had a telegraph, we had uh, the coffee industry, that it was uh, considered so good, the Puerto Rican coffee, that it got into the Vatican. And, and uh, uh, one uh, true fact is that we invented the coffee break. And uh, then we had about 500 schools. We had uh, the sport of Paso Fino. Do you see the horses there? It's, it's very particular because they, they go like this. It's a sport, very, very nice sport. And we had some important figures like Ana Otero. Ana Otero became one of the most famous piano players of her era. And she toured uh, Europe. This is uh, 19th century, and, and the United States. We also have Antonio Paoli, this man over here. I'm gonna touch you, that's you, okay. He was considered the king of the tenors and the tenor of the kings. And uh, in 1907, he recorded the first ever opera singer, Long Plain, and that made him the most famous actor, uh, singer in the whole world at that time. I mean, Verdi's uh, uh, Otello was considered Paoli's Otello. And uh, he was at that time more f famous than Caruso, in fact. And uh, we had great painters also. Jose Campeche, you can find his, his uh, paintings in the New York museums. And uh, uh, Francisco Oyer, uh, he, I think he, one of his paintings is in, how do you pronounce that? The Louvre, the Louvre in, in Paris. His, his paintings are over there. And uh, uh, in the middle, it's Eleuterio Derquez. He was a professor. He was um, a journalist. He was a playwright. And he founded two schools to teach um, children from all races. You know, uh, but he committed a crime at, at that time. He was teaching uh, the Puerto Rican history, and that was a crime. So he was fired, he was expelled, and he died poor. I mean, a great man doing a great thing, but that's, that's how it was uh, at that time. 1898, the Spanish-American War. 
that's when uh, Americans were uh, went to Puerto Rico. It, it wasn't an invitation. It wasn't a party. It was an invasion. And uh, that's uh, one of the photographs that you see over there. And uh, so this uh, lack of uh, 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 real history education continued uh, from 1895 uh, 98 on. So uh, what happened that uh, we didn't we didn't understand we didn't believe because we were never taught about this. We never uh, we thought that the Indians never revealed, you know, that they were docile. And uh, we, that we, the ones that study um, uh, um, history know that that, was, uh, that wasn't true. The blacks, there was a lot of revolts, many, plenty of revolts, but nothing is taught in the history books, nothing like that. And Mariana Brasetti, with the, the lattice flag, she was a great woman. She went to jail because he wanted to defend Puerto Rico against Spain. And uh, um, she crafted the, the, the lattice flag. And, and uh, she fought in the Grito de Lattice Revolt. But most Puerto Ricans don't know about her, you know. and. Uh, uh, as, a, a re, as a result, today in Puerto Rico, we have the tallest um, Christopher Columbus on your left, the tallest statue in the world in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. And uh, we have Ponce de Leon. It's in a statue in, in, um, in San Juan. And this is uh, Franklin Denauer Roosevelt. See, we have all these uh, uh, streets, avenues, and uh, statues of heroes, supposedly heroes, uh, that not, are not from Puerto Rico, right? So in, uh, uh, in school, we do celebrate our heritage, but it's in a, in a folkloric kind of way, you know. It's not the real uh, story, and and the result is 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 really uh, really awful because we don't celebrate uh, our our people. We don't have holidays to celebrate uh, our people. For instance, we have uh, um, Arturo Alfonso Schomburg. He's considered the father of of Afro American history. And uh, he was from Santurce, Puerto Rico. We don't celebrate him. Only 5% of Puerto Ricans know who he is. And, but they know who these other uh, figures are. And uh, to, get to, to make things even worse, um, um, the history classes right now are gone from the educational system. They're gone. It's part of the Spanish course right now. So when I went to school, we only had two semesters uh, of uh, Puerto Rican history. The wrong history, but at least two semesters. Now, there's none. And uh, so we have all these um, statues, and I, I guess uh, the next statue that we're going to have in Puerto Rico is something like this. Yeah. Because we have statues of all the presidents that had visits in Puerto Rico. So he was there. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a statue of Donald Trump from the... Yeah, but it's true. You, I know you, can, you, you can't believe it, but it's it's... It's, it's, it's true, you know. So if we don't teach uh, history in schools, and what happens to your mind? You, you don't believe in yourself. You don't think that you can accomplish things. And to make things even worse, 
what happens in the educational um, system in Puerto Rico? This is what happens. The annual budget, the annual budget is 3.5 billion, but it doesn't get to the schools. The students don't see it. I mean, my, my own wife went to uh, teach to a school, and it was, she was scared, because the, the director told her the first day, she told her, don't come to work in heels, because uh, there are some uh, disparos, there are some shots yeah, around this, this uh, close by this school, so wear sneakers just in case. That's a situation over there. And then what happens to the budget? There's at least two recent uh, examples. Victor Fajardo was the secretary, and Julia Kelleher uh, both committed fraud. And uh, since 2007, 300 plus school have closed in Puerto Rico. That's a situation. So tell me, that's why, I mean, why would I want to write about this? I mean, because we need to know, you know, the truth. And that's the reason. And the truth is, on the positive side, that being only 100 by 35, we have done a lot of great things. And you can have... Uh, um, an example of just some of them right here in this in this slide. I mean, when you talk about music, don't look anywhere anywhere else. I mean, all Latin America has is one mega star. Mega star is that you're known around the world, and that's Colombia, Shakira. One. Not Argentina, uh, remember, only 3 million people live in Puerto Rico, 100 by 35. But we have Jose Feliciano, Daddy Yankee, uh, Ricky Martin, uh, Mark Anthony, J-Lo, known around the world, right? In sports, we have uh, five uh, Hall of Famers. We have... Um, Orlando Cepeda, we have Pudge Rodriguez, we have uh, Alomar, we have Roberto Clemente, and uh, in science, we have uh, renowned uh, scientists, we have um, two um, astronauts, and Obeba Negron was the first uh, woman Latina astronaut, and Joseph Acaba, and then we, you know her, right? the first ever uh, uh, Latinx woman to the Supreme Court, Sonia Sotomayor. And talking about acting, there they are. Jose Ferrer, 1950, won the Oscar, competing against Hollywood legends like Spencer Tracy, Jimmy Stewart, and uh, this Jibarito from Puerto Rico won uh, the Oscar. Benicio del Toro, I'm sure you know who he is, won the Oscar. And uh, this is a special person, Rita Moreno. I met her once, and uh, she has won every, every uh, major award there is for an actress. And, uh, and so on. I mean, we have done great things, but... Uh, this generation, well, not this only this generation, but especially this gener generation has learned that they have to speak up. We have to speak up in order to make some changes that are necessary. For instance, you have uh, Bad Bunny, who has become uh, a spokesman for uh, issues. Everybody knows who Bad Bunny is, right? Yeah. Uh, so he's, uh, he's touring around the world and he's denouncing the things that have been going on in Puerto Rico, right? Right now, 
the the electricity comes and goes you know it comes and goes comes and goes i think et in outer space thinks we're trying to send him messages you know it's really bad the situation and, and that's just one of them you know and uh in this in this concert uh, he was uh, th at the beginning he was showing people what I'm talking about here they made this uh, video about the great uh, people that have come up from Puerto Rico and uh, that's what I had done in, in, in 2014 already you know I made a video I will show you at the end that it's in the play it talks about our great man and woman but then because he's so famous of course everybody's listening it makes a difference everybody's listening about him let's let's just watch a little bit of this already talking about the great feats all the great things Clemente That's Benicio del Toro's voice, by the way. I'm 
going to stop it right there. Because I'm already crying. I'm sorry. Uh, basically, it's, it's showing that we have been a nation with great accomplishments for a long, long time. And uh, that's why I think that theater is such a powerful tool to uh, change, also music. And uh, let me see if I can go to the next one. Because we don't have enough time, I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay, so uh, we were talking about heroes from other countries, but it's not only artists or uh, athletes, you know. We have uh, a good example here, Fermir Tangis. He saved Peru's economy uh, at the beginning of the last century because um, the cotton um, was going bad in, in Peru. And uh, it represented uh, in, in 1918 the 8% national production, but because he was there and he was able to, to produce uh, um, the way to, to contain the contamination of the, of the, of the cotton, uh, he saved the economy. And in 1932, it represented the 883 0.5% of the national production, so he becomes a re hero, and uh, in order to compensate him, the, the Peru government gave him a life pension to him and to the next three generations. Uh, that's Fermin Tangis, uh, that's in, in, in agriculture, and then you have uh, in science, People like Doctora Carmen Zorrilla Maldonado. She invented uh, the HIV/AIDS vaccine to avoid mother-to-child transmission. She was the first in the world to accomplish that. And then, on the other on the other side, in history, we have nobody knows who El Rey Miguel is. King Miguel. Nobody knows who he is. It was. Uh, uh, in the uh, 16th uh, century, he was a slave in Puerto Rico, and there were some uh, excavations in Venezuela, so they took him to Venezuela. And then he escaped, and he got together with the Indians, and, and he convinced them to help him to rescue the other slaves, and they were successful at that. And, and they all escape and establish the first ever free uh, nation uh, in, in America. I mean, 2,000 years before Jefferson and Franklin, 2,000 years before, but nobody knows this story. Very interesting story. These are... I mean, these are heroes. These are great, uh, great, important people. So I was doing the research, and and then I said, um, who was the first Puerto Rican in the United States? And that's very hard to establish, right? But then I found uh, the story of this man, and uh, he fought two very important uh, battles. To uh, to protect uh, the United States, and uh, I was amazed to find out that he was a lieutenant in in the army, and uh, he he defeated and he he uh, protected Washington D.C. He's Augusto Rodriguez from San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we're talking about. 1762, and he was here from San Juan. And uh, fascinating, fascinating story. Okay, so um, these are all very dense uh, uh, topics that I'm talking about here. And uh, but then, how do you go about conveying all this information? See. What I have talked about here, I don't really talk about in the play.
because there are more people, interesting people even, that I talk about in Hecho in Puerto Rico, in Made in Puerto Rico. But how do you convey all this information into a play? I mean, how do you make it interesting without being a lecturer? I mean, I can, uh, I have not seen this audience laughing, but tomorrow night, everybody's gonna be laughing because uh, the tool that I use is humor. So I'm entertaining people, but at the same time, that's where I, uh, I bring up the, uh, the information and I do it very in a very uh, theatrical uh, way so that uh, I don't use the same style when I'm gonna uh, speak about somebody else or a different topic. <clears throat> Since it's a monologue, I have to be both the antagonist and the protagonist. So what happens is that I play uh, this man who once is desperate, just desperate to leave the island because of the economic, the social, and the political crisis that's going on right now. But he doesn't understand the situation. He doesn't really know why have we gotten into, into this situation right now. He just know that, that life is unbearable in Puerto Rico and, and the key to change his life is just to buy a ticket and come to the States. And that's it, you know. So he's, he doesn't, he, he's not planning to fight to change things in Puerto Rico because he has that um, path to just, you know, t take a plane and come here. So that's, that's what I do to, uh, to uh, uh, convey these ideas in, in the play. And uh, the video that I was telling you about, it's, it's coming up. This is Hecho in Puerto Rico, like Ricardo mentioned before. Uh, more than 35,000 people have seen it. it to, to, tomorrow's um, presentation is gonna be the 149th show. And it was uh, even presented at the Lincoln Center in New York. This is the video that I was telling you about, the next one. Let me see. This is at the end of the play. And the, the play, uh, like I said, people laugh and laugh, but also people are touched. And they, at the end, mostly, they cry a lot. And uh, I've had many experiences with the audience. We have uh, this happening at the end of the play. And I've seen grown people talk to me after the play crying because they feel ashamed that they don't know about Julia de Burgos, a great poet. They don't know about Eugenio, Maest uh, Eugenio Maria de Hostos. They don't know, they didn't know, they've heard the names, but they did not know the history, the great history of this great uh, man and woman. So they're ashamed and I tell them, don't, it's not your fault. Uh, it's not uh, the character's fault not to know about the history because systematically it was hidden from us. So, uh, by the way, if you want to go to Puerto Rico, please do. It's great. Besides all the problems, it's a great place to go. So at the end, uh, just like Bad Bunny did last year, so I was doing this in, in 2014 and showing the, the all the uh, great people that Ricky Martin is involved also in, in social issues in, in, in Puerto Rico. Raul Julia was my teacher, my personal teacher, a long time ago. And uh, this is the end, the end of the play. So uh, I don't think we have much time. So uh, if any have, anybody has a question, please, now is the time to uh, ask me any of the questions that you have. So anybody? Don't be shy. Thank you.
Yeah. Hola. Hola. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask an obvious question. Yeah. The, the spelling, Puerto Rico. That's a good question. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the road to you. Yeah. Usually when I send the, the proposal, to all, it happened here. Somebody uh, tries to correct the, the and changes the L for the R. No, it's, it's not Puerto Rico, it's Puerto Rico. But uh, it's, it's on purpose because that, that's the way we speak. If you call right now, if we, we can do this, we can call el, uh, the Banco Popular, uh, ban uh, bank, the Popular Bank of Puerto Rico, somebody will probably answer you, Banco Popular de Puerto Rico, en que puedo ayudarle, buenas tardes. That's the way we speak. And that's, uh, every, every country has something different. And that's what, what uh, distinguishes us from, from other uh, Latin American countries. We, we substitute the R from the L. And also the uh, R, it's very, very strong. It's like Puerto Rico. You could be called Joberto Rivera Rodriguez. Yeah, that's, that's from uh, very Ar Arabic, you know. You know, that's, that's the way we speak. That's, 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 uh, that's who we are. I'm, I'm proud of it, you know. Anybody else? Yeah, comment. Use, use the uh, microphone, please. Because we're recording. I can I can hear you. No? Come come over here. Come over here. Use mine. Oh, use this one. I do have a comment and maybe you can elaborate. You talk about we Puerto Rican. We had no idea what's going on. We don't know about our, our story. Mm -hmm. But also happened in United States. Yeah, that's true. And one of the reasons like me, I grew up watching baseball. Yeah. And when I was ten years old, I know every single player in my hometown. Uh -huh. Now, if you ask everybody here, they know every New York Yankee player. Right. But if you ask who are the Supreme Court judge, no idea. Yeah. And that's what happened in Puerto Rico. Too much distraction. My question is, you see any difference in the next 20 years, or are we going to go the same route? It's all like sports. I, I'm a hopeful per person. I, I'm a positive person. I think things are going to change for the better. And of course, what I have talked about, it doesn't happen only in Puerto Rico. Of course. Of course. But uh, um, my objective is to to do something uh, for Puerto Rico in this case, you know. But it, of course, it doesn't always uh, it's not always uh, happens in in Puerto Rico. When I I shown this, I've been I went to Cuba to do the display, and you will think they're very nationalist, you know. And a distinguished history professor, after she saw the play, she she told me, I wish we had a play called Made in Cuba, because the youth don't know our history. So it's 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 all over. But it's very important. Again, if you don't know your own history, you don't know who you are. You don't know who your family are. You don't know where we came from. And you don't know where you're going. Question. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you so far. Sure. It's been lovely. I was curious if you could talk a little bit more about the challenges of playing both the protagonist and the antagonist and how you kind of approach that. Yeah. From a craft. <clears throat> yeah, it's a challenge because, of course, I, as an antagonist, I have to uh, play a character that I don't like myself, you know, because he, uh, he, he says uh, phrases like, I don't even proud to be Puerto Rican at the beginning of the play. But if the play is going to progress, if it's going to grow, you're going to have to... Uh, uh, do it this way so that he, throughout the play, he learns about his his real own history, so that he can make make out his make up his mind later on if he's going to leave or stay and fight, you know. But it's hard at the beginning of the play. 
I've been told that, for instance, the mayor of San Juan wanted to just get up and leave. And uh, Oscar Lopez, was, uh, he was at the play and he wanted to get up and leave. Because uh, at the beginning, the, the character uh, is, is not very nice. It's not very nice. But as a, a playwright, uh, it is always good to see uh, how uh, uh, through the action, the, the character grows and, and goes through some changes. And that's what happens uh, in this play. Anybody else? Great. Uh, and then and then you. Okay. Thank you. Hello. So when you're switching between the two characters, do you switch your mindset? Like, what's your mindset when you're going between both of them? And like, how did you, I guess, figure that out? Well, uh, it's uh, a good question for an actress, I assume, right? Uh, it's great to do different characters at the same time. My next play, I'm doing, I think, 10 or 11 different characters in a monologue. It's great. Uh, how do you go about that? It's, it's a technique. It's a technique. It's, and you have to really work hard at it and, and uh, rehearse it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it's, it's uh, come and see the play. Come and see the play. Because uh, I work with uh, magical realism in a... There's a letter in this suitcase, and the antagonist begins to read the letter from his granddad, who immigrated to New York in the 1930s. And that in, in that letter, he's telling his story when he immigrated here, and he faced uh, the, the cultural shock and the racism and all that. And But the, then there's a hat that used to be... Uh, his granddad's hat, and he will wear it. As soon as I put the hat, I become somebody else. I change my, my, the way I, I walk and the way I speak, and the voice is different. And, and tomorrow it's going to be in English, and I will speak like this. I have an accent. I am bilingual, but that means in Puerto Rico that I don't speak, well, neither English nor Spanish. And uh, uh, I'm, uh, you'll see... Uh, how I, I, I another, uh, in another scene, I put a mask that our African people use, and I change immediately. As soon as I put it, <laughs> I become somebody else. Uh, through it's, it's magical realism, what we call it. Go ahead, your, your question, please. Sure, sure. Hola, tío. Hola. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's not my question. Um, my question was... If someone who is an actor who wants to put on their own play, do you have advice for them on how they can get started? If you if you are or not an actor? If you're an actor putting on your own play like you, uh -huh. do you have advice for them? Oh, an advice. Go for it. I mean, go for it. I mean, don't don't be afraid to do what you want to want you have to persist but of course you need to you need to gain some experience and you need to uh be out there and and grow as an artist uh in order to uh be here if i would have written this 20 30 years ago it, it wouldn't have been the same thing honestly anybody else yeah go ahead Oh, Raul Julia, yeah. When I went to school, we I went into a Shakespearean workshop with Joseph Papp, and uh, he had a, a an artist. It was it was unknown to us. Thank you, thank you. It was we didn't know who was coming because every semester we had writers, we had actors, we had lighting designers, and uh, the suddenly we had Raul Julia there. And he was one of my heroes. And uh, he, he had just done the Kiss of the Spider Woman. So he was, you know, up there. And when he found out that I was uh, uh, from Puerto Rico, 
uh, he uh, after after the workshop he he kept talking to me and and uh, the the university president and the dean was wait they were waiting for him and I told Raúl they're waiting for you no don't let them wait you know you know he's my phone number and and you, if you go to New York you know I'll help you out I never went to New York I wanted to go back home uh, but he was very 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 nice very talented uh, he died too young yeah. Yeah, but later on, there, there was a documentary made in, and, and it was shown in, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I finally met uh, his wife and I told her about our encounter and, and uh, the things he said to me. And she said, that, yeah, that's him, that's Raul. Yeah, that's the way he was. Yeah, good experience. I also met Roberto Clemente. When I was a little kid, he went to my hometown, Ponce, to give a baseball clinic. And uh, I met, uh, throughout my life, some, some, I've been fortunate to know Rita Moreno, Che Guitorre, the boxer. And uh, I was very young, but, but I was there. He was, uh, Clemente was dressed in his Pittsburgh Pirates uniform, and he was right there. I mean, and, and I will never forget that. And uh, yeah, that was a great, great experience. Well, I think that it's time, right? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, we've done our job, I hope. <laughs> Thank you so much.